Hi, this is Chris Bosch, and you're listening to Animal House Radio with Aaron and Dr. Mike. He's always good for oh, yeah, no, he's good. You can stick things good, anywhere you want. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's good with people. Very good. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a great dog. Yes, uh, and I got to like admit, him. yeah, it, it was a nerve wracking experience. But <laughs> as you say, a, an older dog, a senior dog, needs to have this stuff checked out all the time. We ruled out one of the, we ruled out something like Cushing's, which is uh, a disease that not a lot of people know about. And, We're uh, going to talk about that on one of the shows, I yeah, think. And it's a cool disease. It hits home. It, it hits home to me, yeah. and yeah. and obviously, because I've been under the impression for a long time that he showed classic symptoms of this disease, and yep. um, and it's one of those diseases we where it's out. a treatable disease, And uh, but other than that, he's Romeo is a pig. He eats anything, and healthy, he's, he's as healthy as Richmond. Richmond, go. are you healthy? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I, I really do hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on. Before we get into our topic, before we do the declawing part two, I have to thank Domino's Pizza. Okay? Domino's Pizza, absolutely amazing. They fed us again tonight. The Marley location, 75 5400 5, <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on once I find their menu. Domino's Pizza, only at the Marley location. Mwah! Amazing pizza. I'm going to get you all for doing that to me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new segment. We have new music for this segment. We have everything. It's been redefined, so now it's going to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can hit the music, please. I present to you, Dr. Mike's Nuggets. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, this pumps me up. Come on, give me those nuggets, baby. So where, where, what, what's this from? I don't know. NFL, Sounds buddy. Sounds like something from Rocky. ESPN. But anyway. No. I like it. It's, it's kind of catchy. So today uh, I'm going to talk about an interesting topic. Uh, it's uh, something that actually Aaron has told me has a problem with. Um, My name is Aaron, not Aaron. Aaron, sorry. It has a problem with. And it happens to happen in dogs, too. Um, do you want to read what the name of this uh, problem is? You do this every single week. I know. Sorry, I'm buddy. <laughs> no. The problem is called coprophagia. Coprophagia. Yeah. You told me you had this problem before. Right? Once uh, I did. Yeah. Once. It was a long time ago. Anyway, yeah, common problem in dogs. Um, <laughs> I'll, I won't uh, stress anybody out by what it is, but it's the problem of stool eating. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when I was younger, I was doing those things. It was, uh, oh, it was, it was pretty Lord. brutal. Anyway, that's a common problem in dogs. And in fact, we have the problem currently. <laughs> right now. As Aaron opens his mouth at her, she's kissing it. That is disgusting. Okay. Uh, coprophagy in dogs occurs actually in my current dog, Dexter, has that problem right now. Really? And, uh, yeah, he does. We caught him yesterday, little bugger. Um, that's why his breath smells so wonderful. And then he licks you all over the face. Oh, that's gross. I don't like him. So does, him so does the uh, there's another dog um, by the name of Dozer who has the same issue. Yes, that's right. Dozer has a problem with, with uh, eating stool. So let's talk about some of the reasons why dogs do that. Sure. Uh, sometimes they do it just to get attention. Tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't laugh. Sometimes they do because to them it tastes good. Oh, of course. Uh, sometimes if dogs are either overfed and you know they're real, like Romeo, real pigs, they eat too much. What's up with that? And Why do you so, call him a pig? Your, he is. Your whole staff means a retriever. He's he he now is. he's a pig? No, no, no. He eats he's a lot. a mean pig? What's but going if he, on? If he eats too much, then he's not going to digest it all, and some of the actual food components will be coming out in the stool, so they actually want to eat some more. So that's yeah, another reason. Makes and sense. if they don't eat enough, sometimes dogs will be hungry, and they'll, believe it or not, go for their stool. The most common causes for coprophagia in dogs is uh, a lot of them will do it from anxiety or stress. Um, one of the biggest problems are owners. Owners end up punishing dogs for eating their poo, and so they end up uh, trying to eat it so it doesn't show up. <laughs> you know, if they poo somewhere uh, and they get in trouble for it, so they'll go and eat it just so they don't get in trouble. Um, and some of them will eat their poo because they want to prevent the scent from attracting predators. That's, that's one of the common reasons in the wild why dogs do that, wild dogs. Um, and certain anxiety or stress uh, disorders will cause that. And finally, there are medical conditions that can cause dogs to eat their own stool. Uh, one of the more common ones is a condition called pancreatitis, where they have uh, inflammation in the pancreas. Um, for whatever reason, it changes something in their body. Um, they can't uh, absorb food correctly, and so they end up going and eating feces. Now, what's neat is there's a few cures for this. Okay, just why don't you pick a word? First you said stool, then it was poo, now it's feces. Okay. It's all the same stuff. It's all stuff. the above. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Pick one word. Okay. A stool. A stool. There you go. Okay. Because now I'm confused. Okay. I think all three of them are different. <clears throat> no, they're all the same. So 
there is a there is one treatment we use it in the clinic often. It's called forbid. And what ends up happening is if there is one dog and he's eating his own stool, mm. uh, you make him you sprinkle this on his food, and when he goes to eat the food and, and digests it, it changes the flavor of his stool to be very very bad. Um, and then when they go and eat it, they hate it. The problem is in my household, Dexter doesn't eat his own poo. He eats my other dog's poo. Um, so that mm. ends up being, st- sorry, stool. Thank you. Uh, so that, that, so in those situations, and what we're going to start doing now is we're going to be baiting the, the stool. So we'll let him do it and let her do it. When they come back in, we go outside, uh, either pour hot chili peppers on it or Tabasco sauce or something of that nature. So when Dexter goes out and says, mm, look at this little chocolate bar, uh, he's going to be pleasantly, unsurpri- uh, pleasantly unpleasantly surprised. Now, in the past, I've noticed that Romeo and other dogs sometimes who don't eat their own stool will eat cat stool. Yeah, that's a common one. That's, that's and, pretty normal. Yeah, and the reason is cat, cats eat very high protein yeah. and the so, protein, yeah, it just so, gives okay. their so stool So that, that's up. normal. That's, that's a that's, very normal. Okay, yeah. fine. So, you yeah, know, and there's lots of things you can do to keep the dog out of the litter box. But that's a, a very common problem, coprophagia. And I guess the, the biggest way to avoid it is just clean up after your dog. Yeah. Right? That's the, the easiest way, avoidance well. behavior. So that's the nugget for this week. And you know what? It's 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 called it's called and, the same thing, a nugget. Very very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, go. yeah, I got a, co- a couple things I want to say. First of all, once again, thank you very much to Domino's Pizza at the Marley location at three fifty eight Marley four one six seven eight five fifty four hundred. At that location, they put more love, more care, and everything into their pizzas. Would you stop with these signs? So the sign says, what is he talking about? It's funny. Come on, you're talking about Domino's yes. Pizza. I'm just goofing around with you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, next week, I'm going to bring my own sign. Okay, good. <laughs> and I want to say hi to Sharon. Now, Sharon listens to us every single week yes. with her four pets out in Edmonton, Alberta. Okay? The Big E! No, is that, that's not what they call it. That's not too far from Regina, where you're from. And I know that your mom, Sheila, is listening right now, and she's going to be very upset to know that you're dating some new guy and that your dad is going to be very upset as well because this new guy is a football player and your dad does not like football players. So, Sheila, your daughter is dating a football player. He's very large. She is He's so a red. big guy. He's a very <laughs> big guy. So red. <laughs> you need to talk to your daughter. Oh. Okay, talk to your daughter about what she's doing. And anyway, Sharon in Edmonton listens to the program every single week religiously because you know what? We're like a religion. I guess. <laughs> okay. That's what she wrote in her email. I listen to you religiously. Now, she's got four pets. Miko, and it's pronounced Miko the way I said it, <laughs> is her youngest of her kitties. Okay? And then she has Smudgy. And it's, it's a little bit of a fluffy ball kitty. I love that writes. name, Smudgy. We have a few of those in the practice. That's cool. That's a cool name. Smudgy. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's got another dog who's a Rottweiler Ooh. named Bronco. Bronco. Oh, it's, I think it's a classic name. That's a good name for a Roddy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, a Bronco. Yeah. And then her last one is a Border Collie. Name is Misty. You know what? We have a couple of Misty Border Collies yeah. in the practice. That's Sharon, a neat name for a Border Sharon, Collie. Sharon, you're, you're, you're really not original in show. terms of... Thank uh, you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, courtesy of Scoop Free, www.scoopfree.com, Lucky Litter, you have just won a Scoop Free system. Amazing systems. Wow, that's they great. Cle- they clean themselves. Yep. They're fantastic. Well, that's for her two kitties. For her, your two kitties. Great. So, once again, 416-785-0680. We're coming back. When we come back, we're going to be going into the debate, declawing. We're going to spend the whole show on this with a couple segments in between. Declawing. What do you think? Is it an amputation? Is it not an amputation? What do you think the law should state? Have you had your cat declawed? What were, What was the outcast? What, what was it like outcome. afterwards? Outcast doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, you're right. What, what was it like after? What was it like before? Did you do it for short-term reasons? If you did, I think it's wrong. Was it a long-term decision? How did you, you know, did you adopt an account? Did you sign a waiver saying you, d- you weren't going to get it done, but you got it done anyways? Because this is what happens a lot of times. So once again, 416-785-0680. And you know what? Today we're going to give away another Scoop Free system. We're $275 courtesy of www.scoopfree.com. Lucky Litter. These things are amazing. I've got four of them. <laughs> okay? okay? I don't buy toilet paper anymore. I use them myself. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Yeah! Go to break. We're going to take a break. Show is brought to you by Hills Pet Nutrition, the makers of science, diet, and prescription diet pet food. Back in a couple seconds.